Hi, everybody. I wasn't going to make any more videos until I got my new camera, but I can't wait that long. So, I hope that this video doesn't have too much of that humming sound in it. I turned off, there's no fans on. So, hopefully, that will, um, that was what was causing the humming that was so aggravating in the, movie, in the, in the videos. And so, but I wanted to show you what I'm doing. Um, well, you know what I'm doing. I'm making a quilt. And so, um, so I'm, I'm going to show you. Well, I've made a couple of squares. I ran out of white squares, and so I've switched to, I cut me some out of just blue, like blue square fabric. I have some just this light blue. So I cut me some of those, so I'm using blue. And um, this one here, I just made like a patchwork. This made that square is just a patchwork square. This one here is, well, this one I, I started a while back. And so I've got some slow stitching on this one and um, pieces of just vintage items. This, this one here, this is... You probably can't really see, but I, I'm, there's layers, cause see there's some squares that goes up this way, just squares, and then down this way, and then I put over it, there's this fabric, and I'm not sure what you call this fabric, but you can see through it, and I covered the whole thing with it, it's kind of shiny, and it's kind of like an organza, but it's, I guess maybe it is organza, that I put over the top of that, and then after I and I just put one whole square over the whole top, and then I took these ribbons, and I just put some ribbons, crisscrossed them on there. And then I had this little applique of a little baby bear with a bottle. <laughs> and it's just been around like forever, and you see, I, I, you know, this quilt is not having no rhyme or reason or theme or anything, so I can use up everything that I have. This here square was gave to me by Joy um, some time ago, and um, I haven't done anything with it. I was going to do some slow stitching on it, and I still may do that, but I may not. I may just use this as a square, just like it is on my quilt, because that'll be pretty. And then this is another, just a patchwork square that I made. So that's, that's kind of where I've got up to to about 50 squares now that I've made different styles. Now I wanted to just show you, I don't know if I'll actually get this for the stitch down or if I just want to lay it. Let's see. I'm going to turn my, I hope my camera comes back soon because I'm doing my videos on my own. Okay, yeah, you can see that. You don't want to see my Taxville. Jeez, why do you the two things you gotta do? Pay your taxes and God. I don't have my pay, pay my taxes by the thirty first. Up she comes. Okay, what I wanna do on this one, I've got my blue square. And then I'm gonna take scraps. And what I wanna do is make me like a um I don't know, I call them a skyline. And so I've got like scraps of fabric. And what I'm going to do is, you know what I could do is, is I, I got different um, shapes and whatnot. So I want to lay out buildings. So like here is a building. You just lay that on there. And just put a little building there. And there's its roof. That's the whole building. Okay, and so then we can have. It's crinkled. I have to iron it because it's crinkled. Okay, so then do I want this to be a big tall house just like it is? Maybe it's not exactly straight, but this is um a crooked neighborhood, a crooked neighborhood, and so I'm gonna um 
Let's see. I'm going to cut this one into a you see how many squares that is half and then a square already. And I'm going to just put that roof on this one here. And then, see here, I just got a little square. I can put that right up there as a window. And then I'll need to have a door or two or nine. Oh, she must have gave me two of these because I did start slow stitching on this one with some beads. So this one I'm going to come in. I just didn't even realize she'd given me two. That one I'm going to slow stitch and work on. She had given me two of them. Oh, well, see, I'm going to right by my, my right. Okay, this is a piece of. Hmm. I think I'm going to make. I'm going to cut this. This is already. Um, this is already boro stitched, this fabric. Well, I'm, I just cut it like this. I'm going to put that one right on the edge. And because the fabric color changed right here, that's where I cut it. So that'll be kind of a loop. So maybe I'll move this over to this one. Like this, I think. And then, look at this purple satin. Do we want a purple satin house? I think so. I think we should have a purple satin house. So, let me see. This, this house is going to be kind of short. It's kind of short. And as I'm cutting off these pieces, I'm cutting using these thinking shears right now, but um, I'm not being particular. Like, I got, so it's pink here and pink here, but not there. Okay, so what now if I move this house over to this corner and put the roof on here? And then, um, if I put this here, and then we have to have a roof, but I don't want it to be the same roof. Or maybe I can put this roof. Here and then this roof here. Yeah, that's what I want to do there. And then I'm going to take another little piece of this, and that's already boro stitched. And I'm just going to cut that because that's so pretty. And I'm going to put that in, and that's going to be a door on that house. And then a door on this house. Oh, this side, and it's going to be green. To match the story to this side. Put that over there. And then, let's see. Let's, let's see. Let us see what we want. Um, I just have so many just scraps, scraps, scraps. And just this, you know, just use your scraps and make up pretties. Oh, gosh, look at this piece. This is nice right here. I like this a lot. Okay, that'll make a nice door. So I'll put that one here for a door right there. And then, let's see. I wonder if that's too, no, it's not too many houses. Oh, you know what I can do? Just thought of this. Let me move this one sort of back here. And then move this one over here. And then that makes it look like this house is just setting back further in the field. So I'll do this way with that house. And then have this house here. Move that door over here. And, and then put this door on there. And then put, let's put that roof back on that house right there. Oh, see? Now I think we're cooking. Now I think we're cooking. This house needs a door. And, um, let's see. Choices, choices, so many choices. And, um, 
Oh, look at this is a piece. It, this is actually a piece of denim off of the, off of the, um, oh, I like that. It was, um, where I was cutting up a piece of blue jeans, a pair of blue jeans. And I was putting, um, that's going to be that door. That's actually the hem off the blue jeans. That door right there on that house. And then, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, we have so much decisions, decisions, decisions. Um, golly. Oh, I got all these squares that are so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, you know what I'm going to do with these? Oops, I'm just going to you know exactly what happens out there and you put a lid on. Ooh, look at this piece. This is going to be a tree. Okay. This is going to be a tree out here in the forest. Out here in the forest. Now, let's see. What if I put this tree, this piece I just cut off over here, and that will be a tree there. And I'll put this back here. And there's a tree. That tree. And this other piece that I cut off, I'll put over here on this edge. And then that will be that tree. And um, I can actually put in another house. Let's see, what do we have here for house building material? Oh, this is nice. That might be another tree, though. That might be another tree. Let's see. And then I can have like a forest of trees back here. Oh yes! That would be good. That'd be really good. And then we're gonna put this right now. No, we're not gonna do that right now. Because I think I wanna put another house. I look I like this back here. And I think I'm going to, this is really nice petite, oh that's nice, and I'm going to take that and cut me a piece, and these are like tall townhouses or something, let's see, now I want to do this, something to do. That this is going to just go to under that groove. So we get it all laid out before I actually start stitching on this. And it's a blue fabric, so it's like, um, it's like, it's like, um, it's a light blue, so it's, it's, it's like a good color for the back. Okay, so now when we get out. That house needs a door. And put this here. And put that little piece here for the window. And put this little piece here for the door of this house. And then that house needs a roof. A roof. Roof, roof. So, we'll just go ahead and Put that one there, and that's that roof there. Now these guys are up in the clouds, sort of. So I'll take these two. And then we'll go through anything away with them. We'll go through two of them here. And I'm going to three pieces of the I'm going to cut out a cloud, a couple of clouds here. 
it is just so fun just to no design, no plan, no I was told I had a plan. I knew I wanted to build a, a little town here. And um so there's a cloud kind of right there and then let's put a cloud up over these trees and I'll put it behind over that tree and under that tree. So there's a little cloud. And um Then I have, let's see, I have some little things somewhere here. Some little things. My little things. Um, oh, here they are. Here's the little things. You know I can smell things. But can you do a smell? You dropped the toys on the floor? I'm still happy you. Aww, thank you, sweetie pie. Okay, so I'm keep putting another marker here. Now, I have some, some Suffolk puffs here. Or two of those. So somehow, well, I don't think I'm gonna lay these out yet. But I think what I'm gonna do is put a separate puff, puff a couple of these, and then the rickrack down for their stems, so there'll be flowers in the town. So um, and isn't this pretty? I think I'll put that somewhere. But is that be a door? A crocheted door? Yes, it could be. All right, this, see? Now, when I make something, it probably isn't anything like what you've seen before. Because, um, I'm just different. I'm, I'm just different. And I'm, I'm a rare breed. Um, uh, I'm a rare breed. <laughs> When I was made, they threw away the mold. They said, oh, that was a fail. Okay, so I am putting some pins in here now. Just a few, just to kind of hold. Hold these things tight down in here where they are going to live for the rest of their lives. And I think I'm going to kind of like this idea of making a scene. Like the one I showed you the other day when I made a video. I didn't make any videos yesterday. So I was having a pity party, and um, I had to attend my own pity party because somebody else would come. And I was just telling you that story. But anyway, um, because I didn't want to make a video, you know, with this dumb camera that just, well, it's not, I shouldn't call it a dumb camera, because it's, it's, it's a smart camera. It didn't do anything to hurt me. Just makes noises and it's fuzzy, but it's still a camera. It's working. So okay, I'm just putting some some pins in here to kind of hold tight these pieces where I want them to stay, and then I'm going to start stitching. I'm going to start stitching them and see what happens. And then I can add add to these because I want a um, which I always want to add to everything because I'm one of them that is more is more and some people say less is more but I always go with more is more. Hi, Papa. What's up? Um, yeah, and I noticed there was one. I was a little bit chilly, but. I put my scarf. Yeah, I had to put my ear in the scarf. On. Okay, you be good out there. You like to go outside. Okay, I think I got all of my pieces sort of put on gently. 
put scissors in so I don't lose them. Put my scissors back up on the hook. Now, I think everything is sort of pinned. So see, there, everything is sort of pinned. And that's my town scape. See there? If I had like, um, a little puppies or something, like a little, little somethings like that. Um, that man makes the best coffee on this side of China. Now, there. So I'm going to just start sewing, and, and how should I sew? I think what I'm going to do is go along the, along the edges. And I've got a zigzag going on here on this one right now. And so, I don't really, when I do this kind of thing, I, um, I don't ever know what I'm going to do. And so, don't ever take this as a tutorial. This is just, a, I'm showing you what, this is what you can do is if you, if you really do not have a whole lot of, um, plans ahead of time and, um, and stuff to work with. This light is so bright on this sewing machine. It looks like a hole. But, but anyway. Um, I don't know what I was saying, but I'm sure it was important. But, but what I was saying, though, really is you don't. You, you can craft away with, with not having really much of anything as far as, um, as supplies. Um, well, because I am like 71 years old, I, um, I have been doing crafting and sewing and everything for most of those years. When I know before I could walk, I didn't do much crafting, but, um, but then things changed. But, but so because I've been doing things for so long, I, I have got things around my house that I've got things from when I used to do macrame. I've got things, I mean, because I've done so many different, different things. And, um, so then, like, I was looking around, yesterday I was in the storage room, and I got this one room that's supposed to be for storage room, but it's just, well, it is storage, because it's just jammed full of stuff. And so I was going through boxes, and I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot I even had this, you know, stuff that I used to do. And so, and then I got some, like, these little dolls and things I used to make and sell at craft fairs. I'm going to have some of those on my my junk sale on Monday. The little dolls. They're so cute. And um, sometimes I, and then I found this one box of things that I used to make that just held a bag of tea because I made like a whole whole bunch of little inexpensive items that might be in my craft fairs. I found some of them. I made bookmarks. I did so many things and I was finding things. And so I have got stuff around this house that is just taking up space. And so that's why I need to just start using it up and just and when I'm doing something like this with just scrap fabrics, and um, you're just using up things with, and you don't have to have a plan. In this quilt, I have enjoyed my work on this quilt so much because it has absolutely no, um, no. Um, Rye Maurice it has no plan, it has no directions. The only thing is all the pieces are 
10 by 10, all the squares. So that when I put, start putting them together, so, and then you don't have to go 10 by 10, you can do whatever size square you want, you know. Just have them all the same size. And that's the only the requirement, really, to do something like this. And so, is to just have them all the same size. And I have noticed some of mine might not be exactly, and I might go through with all of them and cut them all to nine and a half, even all after they're finished. It won't matter, you know, that one half inch. And I'm saying nine and a half only because I have a nine and a half inch square ruler that I could use as my guide to make sure that they're all exactly the same. So if I don't have them exactly the same size, I think once I sew them together, I'm going to have a lot of bunches in there, a bunchy quilt, which that wouldn't bother me either. If it didn't lay perfectly flat on the bed, it, that wouldn't bother me either. It's just, it's all, it all would be just fine for me. So, but I think I will go with it and just go nine and a half all the way around and just just and that would be like trimming a quarter of an inch off all the way around and that wouldn't make any difference really to just make sure that all the all the um squares are the same size for when i start stitching them together and i'm getting anxious to start stitching them together and i think i do know exactly how i'm going to stitch them so because I do know how I'm going to do that, I probably could start stitching some together before I actually have them all done. And see, sometimes I like to put the cart in front of the horse. And, um, and so, and now I'm just kind of going around each piece with this zigzag stitch and I'm not getting them perfect some of them are running off the edge and so the ankle I gotta switch to my other foot no my gas pedal push a little over here and I gotta have that all stitched no kidding and get a little bit of a stitch on this tree and then move to another section. Move the gas pedal over here a little bit. Use the old left foot. That's a good thing to have two feet. So if one of them doesn't work real well, use the other one. Thank goodness we have no plans today. So that means I can just sit right here. Oh well, we don't have no plans any day, so what am I talking about? I can just sit right here and stitch. Okay, down. Now I'll just keep going down until I get to this house. We're working on the forest, now we're working on the house. And like I've said before, this um, process like this is so simple. It's just, it, it's just, there's no measuring. I've been watching quite a few quilting shows lately and some slow stitching. Well, slow stitching is becoming to be a real popular thing that so many people are doing slow stitching and um so many people are doing slow stitching now and i've been seeing what they've been coming up with and oh my gosh so beautiful and so i have started doing a slow stitch strip that is just, I'm just stitching odds and ends to a strip, a two and a half inch strip of fabric, and I'm just hand stitching 
um, different things to it. And you need to learn this. I'm the buttons for the doorknobs. See how things will just pop in your head when you're doing this? If you don't have any directions um, written in, in a book on a piece of paper, then you just sit, you start doing stuff, and things will just pop in your head. You know what? I've got some good fabric stars. I just like that. I've just seen them recently, so I wonder where I've seen them. Might have been when I was digging through that back room. That would be neat to stick on. Some, and I bet I, I bet I have my buttons. I bet I have some star-shaped buttons. I know I've got star-shaped um, sequins, but I don't know if they would be like hokey. If they would poke somebody when they sleep in under the blanket. Although all the pokiness would be on top. See there, I've got the um, like the trees. I got and this this I've stitched all the way around the trees and the cloud in the in the roof of that house. I can pull that pin out of there. And um, and I got this house is stitched. Well, I didn't go down that edge. I'll have to get that. And well, I don't really need to go to that edge because that's where it's going to be stitched. But um. And so now I'll go to the edge of this house. This this is just fun. This is just so much fun. And I have sat here and sewed, sewn, did some sewing. I don't know if it's sewed or sewn. I don't know which word you're supposed to properly use. I'm not sure I'm proper English. And um but um and then I sit here and see because I got my Kindle over here buried under Mount Scrapmore yes Papa mm -hmm. yes those are mine I know they had fallen off of the ironing board that's where they're supposed to live is on the ironing board on the antique ironing board shelf it's not really iron and wood shelf. And, um, got so many, so many, um, of my journals on my ironing board, which is an old wooden antique ironing board, but I use it as a shelf. As I go. Okay, let's see where we go with this now. It's fallen off, and then I couldn't bend over to pick them up. So Papa just picked them up and ran. And here he goes. Are these yours? <laughs> At yeah. He's funny. He's funny. He's funny. And so I bet I'm gonna get people saying I'm not talking loud enough. I feel like I'm not talking loud. Today. And so, and I apologize in advance if you can't hear too well on this. See, I got another setup in my craft room with um, my other computer with my newer kind of computer and a, and a camera that I've been using up until now, but I haven't been filming in here, in this room, in my sewing room, so I, I'm i just now setting it up to where I can film in this room, and I'm just using old stuff, you know, and so, it would just take me a minute or two to get everything where you can hear me and see, okay. But I just don't want to quit until I get it done because I have a lot of people that seem to be interested in that. Just tickles me. That just tickles me that I have a lot of people that are interested to see 
what I'm doing because that's all I can do is show you what I'm doing. And and then and that you know what I do when I watch videos is because I'm really not good at following directions is I get ideas. I said, oh, I seen this done by, and then I never remember who I seen it done by. But I see people do something, and I might take part of their idea and and change it around a little bit, and or try to maybe imitate it, but end up with something else because I don't follow directions. And so, um. I just watched a video of somebody who was making this really neat, uh, like an over-the-shoulder um, crossbody water bottle thing. And I watched that and I thought, that is really cool. I like that. But it, there were so many steps to it. And then I looked at it and I said, well, you don't need that. You wouldn't need this. You wouldn't need this. And it still would be the same job. So, I'm thinking I'm going to try and make one of those, and, um, but just do it the way I think it would be pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know. I may never make one, but it was a good idea, and it was fun to watch. And so, you just kind of can get a little bit of time. And like even something like this, if you were to do something like this on a piece of fabric by um, hand stitching it, whatever you want to call it, slow stitching, hand stitching, just a needle and thread and poke them on there and, um, and just make a pillow, just make a pillow. You don't have to make a whole great big old blanket. Make just a pillow. Or maybe what would be so awesome is if you make um, a set of placemats, and the placemats don't even have to match, you know, maybe try to get them all the same size, but even the placemats wouldn't have to all be the same size, and so, I like how that little piece of denim made that door on there, and so, so you don't even, I've heard people say, oh, well, I don't have any fabric, but but you do have fabric. If you have got clothes you don't wear anymore, you have got fabric. And, or your children are growing out of their clothes, you have got fabric. You've got buttons on their shirts. You have, you've got supplies, so many supplies. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm good. And so you have supplies. And then, even like if you're making a pillow, and you said, Well, I don't have anything to stuff the pillow with. Well, all the scraps, after you tear that shirt apart and make something out of it, then all the spare pieces are scraps to stuff your pillow with. So, you have supplies in your house. I am sure you have supplies in your house. You have so many textiles in your house that you probably don't use. You might have an old, you know what is really nice? If you have an old towel that's getting thin, that's getting kind of thin because you watched it a hundred times because you've used it so, had it since, yeah, forever. Um, that fabric in that, I have an old towel that is just exactly what I'm going to use that for pages in a needle book. Because I want to make a needle book, and I thought that towel taken apart, cut apart into the pieces for the pages in my needle book is going to be awesome. And so, see, you just do not because I've made needle books before and made them out of I bought new washcloths to make my needle books, and um, you don't need new washcloths, you don't need anything. I need for a while and I thought everything I need to do this I need to go buy it when in fact everything I needed to make something I still had it right here in my house already 
and to be reusing, recycling, upcycling, whatever you want to call it, all of your things in your house is amazing. It's amazing what you can come up with. Now, let me see. I think I've got this whole thing sewn. Let me see if I do. I think, I think I bought it. Let me see. Part of that roof needs to be. Oh, I didn't go down the side of this house yet. I gotta go here, 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 here. But see how now I laid them out. I laid them, the houses out, and I, um, and then I just went around. You can see, see on the back here maybe a little bit where all the stitches are just around the pieces. And, and there, and I think I love it so far. I love it just like it is. And so then, like I say, I want to put some, I'm going to get some, um, it's that one part that I see that needs a little bit of attention down the south side of that house there. So the house doesn't blow off the map. Okay, now. Now, I might not keep you much longer on this because I got to get some things, other things done right now this morning, which I don't want to, but I will. Stuff I have to do. But I love this. But I'm going to get, what I'm going to do is on the, the doorknobs, I'm going to use buttons to make the doorknobs. So each one of these will get a doorknob. And it'll be a button, and and um, then the puffs. I'm going to. I'm not sure where I'll put the puffs, but I want the puffs on there to be like a flower. Let's see. Do I have my green riprap right here where I can see it, or is it buried in Mount Scratmore somewhere? I think it's buried in Mount Stratmore. God, I love it when I got a little stack. I just love the feeling of fabric. Oh, look at this little piece of burlap I have. Wouldn't that make a nice That would have been a nice roof. Okay, I'm going to put that right there because that's going to be a roof on something. That's, I'm going to make some more of these with the houses. I am. Oh, I'll just use a piece of... But if I take a piece of this ribbon and I just cut me off a piece, just cut me off a little piece of this ribbon, this ribbon, and cut me off two pieces because what I'll do is I'm going to put this one piece of ribbon right here. This is the stem of my flower. Okay, so now I have a stem of my flower. And then I'm going to put the puff at the top of the stem. Put the puff. Let's see. I think I'm only going to just start the stitch right in the middle of the puff. Oops, that's why I moved because it's thick in the middle. There we go. Now, I can top this so much into most anything. I think I gotta put me a new needle. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna take this other piece of ribbon and we'll just fold that in a V. And here like this. Mm. 
my niece. Let me share. Yesterday had a little baby girl. She named her Joy. And um I asked for prayer for for my niece. Bless her heart. She's she's got cerebral palsy, my niece does. And she needs a lot of help herself in getting around and doing things. And um, she's thirty six, this is her first child. And um her husband is going to be a lot of help, I know. But she's going to need a lot of prayer to get through this, getting used to being the mom and stuff. So it was like unplanned. It was not planned, if you can call it that. But anyway, there. So, there. See, now I just put that flower in my, um, in, so it's got some landscaping done in my, in, in, in this. I think it's going to be so pretty. So, and I might even be able to take some of my, um, my um, fabric paint, or my fabric markers, and maybe put a couple little uh, birds flying in the sky, and, um, and I think I'm going to be making, you know, a few more pieces that are that are like the whole I'll, that I won't be covering up the whole base like this here the base is that light blue and so then all the pieces are sewn onto the light blue and most all of them that I've made up to now had the base I was white and I covered up all the white you don't see any white well here is like it's a blue and um I don't think that I have to cover that whole thing up. I think that's fine because there's all already going to be on the back. Um, flannel is going to go on the back before I stitch them actually together. Before I actually stitch the squares together, everyone is going to get flannel on the back. And so to make it a little bit warmer. But I love this. I think, I think this is awesome and I want to do more similar to this. So, like, it's going to be a king size quilt, so if I have, like, a townscape up here on the upper right corner, and then I have another townscape at the lower um, left corner, you know, then they're just going to be all over. But what do you think of that? I think that is really awesome. I love that. Any ideas that I can do on squares? Please leave me a um, comment, because even this popped up in my head just this morning doing something made me think of oh I could do I call these Tim Holtz houses because um, Tim Holtz has a lot of artwork that he has done with just houses kind of like this and so but yeah I like this I like this a lot I think that turned out really nice and so now I'm going to read out of my errand book and I'm going to read you something. Let's see, we're back in here in the Christmas area. Um, let me bookmark here. Yeah, I read that one. And here it's going to say, this is a book by Helen Steiner Rice. It's called Lovingly, and it's poems for all seasons. And so since we're in the winter and Christmas season here, this section is for the season of winter. Okay, this one says, was it really so? A star in the sky, an angel's voice, telling the world, rejoice, rejoice. But that was centuries and centuries ago, and we ask today, was it really so? Was the Christ child born in a manger bed, without a pillow to rest his head? Did he walk on earth and live and die, and return to God to dwell on high? We were not there to hear or see, but our hopes and dreams of eternity are centered around that holy story when God sent us his Son in glory. And life on earth has not been the same regardless of what the skeptics claim, for no event ever left behind a transformation of his kind. 
So question and search and doubt if you will, but the story of Christmas is living still. And though many may conquer the earth and the sea, he cannot conquer eternity. And with all his triumph, man is but man is but clawed until he comes to rest with God. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but right? man is but clawed. Okay, until he comes to rest with God. And so, was it really so? That's for you to decide, isn't it? And so. And it is the Christmas season, so the next one I read will be the miracle of Christmas, because I want to get all these read um, in my videos for the season of winter. And so I don't think it's actually winter yet, I think it's still fall, but we're in the Christmas season, so sort of in the, in the crossover. Okay, I ask God to watch over each and every one of you, every step you take, every move you make, and and sew a few stitches and see how wonderful it feels you're gonna love it god bless you all may he watch over you every step of faith every move you make and i will see you on the next video and please apologize i apologize if there's humming in this movie in this video it's just the way my camera works okay god bless you all.